From the shores of Daytona Beach to the Arizona desert, these drivers are back to do battle once again. Will 16-year-old Tyler Reif pull off another intense Phoenix win? Tyler Reif wins it! Or will the Wild West bring about a new rising star? Lone Ranger tonight. This is Arkham Menard Series at Phoenix, only on FS1. And what a perfect night to go racing right here in the desert. We welcome you to Phoenix Raceway for the Arkham Menard Series General Tire 150. It is the second stop for the National Series right here in Phoenix. We have a great night on tap and an even better analyst. So excited to have this man joining us. Back in 2011, well, he won the biggest race of them all, the Daytona 500. What a moment this was, and we're so happy to have Trevor Bain back with us. He's been doing tremendous work with us here at NASCAR on Fox. So Trevor, you know, we just want to pump you up right off the start. I, I'm going to pay you to follow me around if you're going to hype me up that good. And I appreciate you all showing the video every time. I mean, great this is video. great. Great video. You know? Yes, you have to. If you're Daytona 500 champion, that just follows you around for the rest of your life. But Thank you. we're, we're excited to have you join us. I'm Jamie Little, Phil Parsons, and uh, Trevor's along for the ride tonight as well. And it was unbelievable today. 43 cars showed up to qualify. Only 40 make the field. So tell us a little bit about what we can expect tonight, Phil. What, what an unbelievable turnout. Actually, the largest field of cars we've had since the, uh, the mid-90s here, but this is an opportunity race. We saw Jesse Love win this West Series championship two years in a row. He wasn't yet 18 years old. When he turned 18, he got an opportunity with Richard Childers. After winning the ARCA championship, he won 10, year, uh, 10 races last year in the ARCA National Series, but he got a start here in the West Series. Phoenix is one of those places he did, but all the owners are here. The Cup owners are here. The Xfinity owners are here. Who's going to be the next Jesse Love? Tyler Reif showed us last year as a 15-year-old that he could get it done on this big stage. We've got so many drivers with that opportunity here, and they know this is the first time, that the only time that the ARCA Menard Series, National Series, will be in combination with the West Series. Five times we'll see that back east with the East Series and the National Series running in conjunction. But this is an opportunity for the 15-year-olds, the 16-year-olds, the 17-year-olds to race on this huge stage right here and show somebody what they can do. Well, I love that you bring that up, Phil because you could see it in these drivers' eyes. In the garage this morning, they're just fired up to race in front of cup teams at a cup racetrack. They know for years they'll get an opportunity to race here, hopefully, if they can take advantage of these kind of opportunities. I look at the field and I see drivers like Grant Enfinger, who battled for a truck championship here last year, and then I see other drivers like Isabella Robusto that's making her first ARCA start. Both of those qualified in the top six, so the, there's a vast you know, valley there of experience between the two, yes. but they're both here to do the same thing. They want to win a race in the ARCA series. Grant Grant's done that 16 times, and I'm sure somebody else is going to add their name to that tonight. It's just incredible in the Arkham and Art Series. You have drivers that aren't even old enough to drive street legal on the street, <laughs> a regular car, but they're racing against these drivers who have been doing this for 50 years, Phil. So you would mention a little bit about the Arkham National Series. We also have the West Series. Kind of explain how that works. Yeah, we have the Arkham National Series that's been around since 1953, and then we have a couple of regional series. As we mentioned, this is, gives the opportunity for drivers that aren't yet 18 years old. There's six races at the Arkham Menards National Series races, tracks they race on that uh if you have to be uh, you have to be 18 years of old or older to be able to race there, so this gives them an opportunity as a younger age to race for a championship. Exact same rules, exact same cars. We do that on the west side, probably probably 12 on this side of the country, and then back east we have I think eight races. Five of those are in conjunction with our national series, but it's an opportunity for those young drivers to get a chance. And by the way, this West Series has been around since 1954. It started out as Pacific Coast Late Model Series, so it actually is only one year young than Arkham Menards National Series. Unbelievable. There's so many West Coast drivers out here tonight. They want to stand on top and get that trophy. <laughs> now, Trevor, one mile over here, mile over. Um, this place can give people fits. You see the dog oh, yeah. leg. We're going to be talking about the dog a lot tonight. For sure. The dog leg is going to be tricky for these drivers. This is such a unique racetrack. It's so much fun, but it's also frustrating. These restarts right here get wild in every series from Cup to Arca. You see drivers taking all the different options four wide there. So as a leader, you got to be on your game. You can't leave that door open. 
but you also don't want to make the mistake of cutting to the bottom too soon and get that penalty. Love the restarts here. As you see, four or five wide. I hope the guys brought their mouth guards. Well, all of the drivers are ready to go. Let's go trackside to fire those engines. Phoenix Raceway, this is a moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get the Arkham and Art Series General Tire 150 started? Here to give the command to fire engines is the owner of Prescott Tire Pros, Louis Gomez. Take it away, Louis. Drivers, start your engine! How about that command? Drivers ready to go. So Marco Andretti there. How about that shot? Beautiful. Puffy clouds, but no rain in the forecast. It is perfect. 69 degrees, only eight mile per hour winds, guys. It was 60 a week ago at Las Vegas, and it is beautiful. Well, earlier today, actually just a few hours ago, we had the General Tire Pole Award qualifying, and once again, it was that man, William Sawalich, picking up the pole award for the second straight year here at Phoenix. He is the man they are all chasing. And you'll see the General Tire lineup ticking on by. Got Sean Hangarani starting on the outside of William Swalch for the start of this race. But how about we dial up our pole sitter, Phil? Yeah, let's do that. Hey, William Swalch, this is the Fox booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. Great job so far in practice and in qualifying. Well, what are you looking for in this race, William? Yeah, I mean, Starkey, and, uh, Starkey Sound Gear Toyota Camry is really fast here. Uh, hopefully we can get JGR a win. Um, I mean, looking to lead the whole race, if not, uh, when there is at the end, be there on the last lap. William, this is Trevor Bain here. I saw you up on top of the hauler during cup practice earlier today. Did you learn anything from those guys you can apply tonight? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I feel like if my race car is trending tight, I can probably dip the left front on the apron and de-wedge it a little bit and get some cut off the corner. Uh, that's pretty much all I can see, but other than that, just uh, trying to figure everything out and hopefully we'll get the win. Appreciate your time. Have a good run. Thank you, guys. He's ready to go. I know William Swalich has said that this race last year was the one that got away. They're coming back with a vengeance. All right, Phil, give us our race analysis for this evening. As we take a look at the grid, you see Amber Balkan back in row number eight. 40 cars here tonight, and there's our race analysis for the General Tire 150. You see this race is 150 laps, 150 miles. We will have a race break on or around lap number 75, and these teams will be allowed to change tires and add fuel and make any other minor adjustments. They'll have five minutes to do that, and they will not lose their position. How they come on the pit road for that race break is how they come off pit road and re will restart this race unless they spend too much time in the pits or have some sort of a penalty. As they roll off pit road, we're getting closer to the start of action and our two pit reporters covering everything for us tonight, Josh Sims and Heather DeVoe. Good evening, Heather. Well, good evening, Jamie. It's been a year in the making and tonight we will finally see Isabella Robusto make her first start here in the Arkham Menard series. Now, last season she suffered a concussion just one week prior to her originally scheduled debut and she was sidelined for eight months while she had to anxiously await this moment. And when talking to Billy Venturini today, he said, you know what, this moment didn't seem too big for her at all. She doesn't even seem nervous to me. So I asked Isabella just before she got in the car, hey, where are your nerves at? And she said, you know what, I've been able to keep them at bay most of the day, but right now they're ramping up. Josh Sims? Well, Tyler Wright bursts onto the scene with a thrilling win in Phoenix right here last year. Well, the goal for him once again is not just to do the same. He wants more. Finished runner-up in the ARCA West standings last year. He wants a championship. Well, that starts with going back-to-back -back here in Phoenix. Now, the big thing for him, earlier in practice today, they had a transmission issue. Luckily, he said they got it fixed without having to replace it. He said, now the goal, we have to run a smart race and make sure we are there at the end. Jamie? What a day and what a race it was for this young man a year ago, Tyler Reif from Henderson, Nevada, just right outside of Las Vegas with a new team this year. We talked about the big win. There was a lot going on in that race, but <laughs> that was. man on the final restart laid back. They got stacked up, but he fought back 
Yeah, Roman lost the lead, lane. lost the lead yes, on that last did. restart and, and fought his way back. So much attrition in this race. It was just survival. You think about Jesse Love and Jack Wood and William Sawalich. They all kind of got together early in this race, and he was the survivor that made it to the checker flag and got that win. 15 years old, so he's back and he's a whopping 16 yeah, he's years 16 old. Now. He's, he's, <laughs> older. he's an older kid now. His hair is even bigger than it was and last year. He did year. grow it out some. Such a great personality. And we have a lot of those. I, I wish we had four hours tonight to tell you guys all the stories throughout this field. I mean, these kids and where they come from, the backgrounds of the veteran drivers. I mean, this is just a huge moment for them to be on this stage. And we've talked about the fact that we have a West Series racing here as well as our National Series. And it's pretty much split. It's almost right down the middle. Just about half of the guys are regular West Series competitor, and the other half are National Series competitors. So it is International Women's Day, and we have four women racing in the field. Amber Balkin, we mentioned her. Tony Breidinger, we'll talk about her in just a little bit. You know, you mentioned the stories, Jamie, and what I love about this series is this is the beginning. This is the introduction of a lot of these drivers to, you know, our NASCAR fan base and to team owners. It's such a cool stage to be on. I know when I got to race on an actual NASCAR track after being on short tracks, racing late models or the Pro Cup series, this was such a big deal. These guys, their hands and knees are shaking right now a little bit, waiting to take the green flag on this racetrack. Isabella may have been calm earlier today, but I guarantee you right now the nerves are going. By oh, the yeah. way, I mean, she's making her ARCA debut. She qualified six, so there she is. We're going to keep an eye on her. What an athlete she is, no doubt. We have two onboards that will bring you on track pictures. This will always be fun. Marco Andretti. Yeah, I love these views right here. He's starting a little bit further back in 17th here. We'll see if he can work his way through the field and get some action on this Suchi fast track onboard camera. We're also going to run along with Jake Bowman. He's going to start from the 13th spot. This is a general tire on board. So what you, as you mentioned, what great pictures we have. Look at that the sun shining stars. in there, Love Bill. That. Right in his eye, too, it by does. the way. It makes it tough getting yeah. him to turn three there. It won't be there long. It's going to be gone pretty soon. Fortunately, it's going to dip down below the grandstands. All right. This is when the nerves get pegged, right, Trevor? Oh, for sure. Going through turn three, the pace car is off. William Sawalich will lead him in the 18 car. Sean Hangarani on the outside. Green flag is in the air. We are racing at Phoenix. Right away we see that dog leg being used, protecting that bottom three, almost four wide, getting into turn one here. Strong move by the 20 of, of Gio Ruggiero. That's, that's his first ever national series race as well, driving for Venturini's. Gio Ruggiero is oh, oh, trouble, oh, already. trouble on the track. Two cars involved. It looks like the 77. Cody Kimili. Have to see what in the world led to this. That was a hard impact. The 07 is the other one. That's Danica, Danica Dart. One of the That's other females, one of the five females we have in the field. This was literally in the back of the field because she had started 40th. So yeah, not sure where it went sideways. Let's take a look at it here in progress. See top right of your screen. A lot of tire smoke getting in. It happened very early in the corner, Phil. It really did. You saw the 05 with a lot of smoke. Maybe maybe put something down on the racetrack. That's Michael Maples in the 99 involved as well. That's where the contact for the front of Camille's car came. Tough break for him. I was talking to him in the garage area. He's a junior in high school. And he's already signed with Arizona State as a left-handed pitcher. What? So what's he doing here? <laughs> he's ready said to loves to race, baseball. loves to race. Living that dream. Well, caution is out here at Phoenix Raceway for the first time. Plenty more racing to come. Stay with us.
My favorite condiment is the Raisin Cane sauce. It's really good. Ranch. Ranch on everything. Absolutely. I'd put ranch on ranch. Absolutely. On everything. It goes with everything. I mean, you can get a ranch on a salad. You get a ranch chicken tenders, fries. I mean, there's so many variety and opportunities with ranch. I'm always going to put salt on my food, probably before I even try it. Uh, Chick-fil-A Polynesian sauce. Hot sauce. I can't live without hot sauce. I put hot sauce on everything. Yeah, I just had a chicken sandwich. Filled it with hot sauce. Heinz ketchup. Heinz is from Pittsburgh, so I got I to gotta say it. <laughs> Lime. Any type of vegetable, soups, some of them, you can put lamb. Um, what else? Some drinks. How about that? The condiments are all over the map. How about you, I, I never knew lime could be considered a condiment. It had to be the healthiest one, but nobody put honey mustard in the mix here. I mean, come yeah. on, like fries, I'm chicken. I'm a hot, hot yeah. sauce guy. Hot, I'm a hot sauce, sauce for you. Like Amber. Well, how about you? What's your favorite? I like ranch. I shouldn't have ranch been that, yes. It Jake should be Finch lime. Lime, yes. Ranch. Oh, my gosh. Pizza and, oh, so good. So caution is out here at Phoenix for the first time. A few drivers having an issue. Danica Dart was one of them. The 05, the work continues here for David Smith. We see the damage on the front of that car. You wonder if maybe that might have initiated one of the other cars getting turned around. Because the first thing we saw was the brakes locked up or a lot of smoke from the 05 car. That was after the guys had already started spinning. Yeah, they were up Danica, out of the so, groove and, yeah. and very high on entry there for sure. Yeah, David had trouble in, uh, in practice as well. He actually lost his primary car, had to go to a backup and having issues again. Not the kind of day they were hoping for. Hard to get your rhythm, right? We just talked about the nerves, especially for these drivers making their debut in the National Series, and then boom, caution comes out, lap number two. I would say the restarts are the most intense thing, and now we gotta do it again. That's, as you said, it's hard to not get in a rhythm and see what your car has, to go out and run five, 10 laps, and maybe give some feedback to your crew chief so he can be thinking about adjustments for the, the the break we have in the middle of the race here. And then, you know, again, you're going to be three, four wide getting into turn one. So you just hope that you can make it through that. We mentioned Marco Andretti. He's got the onboard back in 16th right now. He is our Suchi fast track driver. Might be familiar with the name Andretti. It's kind of cool to have the third generation in the field. He has some experience here in, in an Indy car. Obviously, I don't know that that would help you any. <laughs> I would say the rate of speed's a little different. <laughs> a little here bit different corner. here. I'm not sure that would help, but you, you can see what a what a great job. He, yeah, I remember that runner-up finish he had though back in the day. It was really early in his career, and he's he's won a couple times in the IndyCar Series. But uh, he's going to run a pretty ambitious schedule of Arca Menards races. I think he's scheduled to run 14 as well as some truck races, and I think maybe Coda might be his first truck race. And I don't think people realize how challenging it is when you switch gears like that to go from an open-wheel car to a stock car. I mean, he's doing it the right way by starting in the Arca Series, building a foundation, because that's what this series is all about. You want to set your footing for these drivers that are having their first race. It's not about winning tonight. It's setting a foundation, learning these types of races car so as you move up you don't make mistakes let's get an update on marco and Dreddy. josh yeah, Jamie, and you guys talked about the fact that he started 17th in this race. Well, that's because when they showed up at the track, found out there was a shock mount broken on that car. So he didn't get a chance to actually practice. He said the first two laps he ran were during qualifying. So, of course, a little bit of a learning curve for him. He said, obviously, he's got to be patient in the first start of this race. But it's hard to get comfortable when you're a guy learning a new craft in terms of Marco Andretti when you don't get a chance to practice the way you want to. Yeah, I was talking to Bruce Cook, who basically runs this operation along with the 42 of, of Tanner Rife, and he said the cars got loose in the trailer, and that's why they had so much wow. damage to the cars. That's why they weren't able to practice. They had to do all the repair work from all the damage that was done in the trailer. You never hear of those things. All right. these little things we take for granted, these truck drivers driving cross country with all the equipment, the race cars. This week, especially for NASCAR, I mean, we were just in <laughs> Vegas. They went all the that way back to haul. Charlotte, then all the way back out here to Phoenix. Truck drivers are MVPs during these two weeks, yes. that's for sure. Hey, Bill and, and Trevor, this is a good time to mention how the Arkham Art Series is different when it comes to restarting. There is no restart zone here. Yeah, most of the NASCAR fans and our viewers are, are familiar with the restart zone. We have it plainly marked, but we then we'll do that in the Arkham Art Series. They have a restart line, and if the driver doesn't go by that line, then the, then the 
then the flag man will actually start the race. And then the guy that's not the control car, whether it be on the inside or outside, there you see it right there. You see that first line. That's the restart line. Well, we don't go by that zone. We're at a big NASCAR track, right? These guys race on short tracks sometimes across the country that aren't aren't at this level, uh, uh, you know, having a Geico restart zone painted. So they have to have it consistent across it. But to be honest, I don't know that all these drivers don't know that that's not a <laughs> restart zone tonight. We've heard them talk about it before, actually. Well, we saw the video from last year's race, and, and Tanner Reif actually lost the lead there. Right. And that's because he didn't go when he got to that line, and the starter went ahead and started the race. Yep. All right, first restart of the evening coming our way. William Sawalich in the 18, Gio Ruggiero in the 20, side by side. Nice restart Great job for Sawalich. Now that's going to give him some options getting into turn one. He's not side by side. He doesn't have to protect that bottom. He can run that nice arc. Great jump by Sawalich there. Yeah, the I initial start, we saw Gio go down on the apron of the racetrack, but they are three wide back Stack towards the pack. Up. Three and four wide. You know who just entered the mix up there? Grant Enfinger in the 23 and third. That's a huge surprise, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Grant shocking. Up front. He just, hey, he's like, hey, the Truck Series isn't racing this weekend. I wanted to go <laughs> racing. So he told us that it's the only one he plans on doing, but it's good to see Grant Enfinger, former champion of the series, back in it. Yeah, and a tough competitor anywhere we go. Four wins in the Truck Series last year. Race for the championship, as Trevor mentioned, when we were back here in November. So we're we're well, used to seeing these 18 and 20 cars battle it out quite I a know. bit, right? We plug and play a different driver this year. I think I heard Jesse Love's name 373 times a race last year in that same car. But Gio is doing it a lot of justice right now. He's off to a great start. Yeah, no pressure, right? This 20 team of Shannon Rush, the same exact team, won 50% of the races last year, and now Gio gets to jump in there, and they will have different drivers behind the wheel, but he's the question mark to me. How can he run, and what will he have for William Sawalich, if anything, tonight? Well, time will tell. These drivers now have a few laps on these tires. Tires are finally going to get some heat in them so they know which direction they, these cars are going to go. Remember, this racetrack is pretty much all in shade right now. So things could certainly change as this racetrack cools off and the, and the crew chiefs were expecting this racetrack to change. And that's where that experience comes in. You talked about Grant Enfinger and where he's at right now. He knows. He has a notebook, right? Phoenix, in the daytime, it's going to do this. At night, when it cools down, gets shade, I expect my car to do this. That's one of those things, as we mentioned Isabella Robusto earlier. She said, I like loose race cars, but I don't know how loose to be to start this race. Hopefully, the track will change and we can dial it in. Andy Jankowiak in the 73 here. He's coming down pit road with an issue. You hear us talk about Andy J, that famous pizza delivery man from Buffalo, New York. He went viral a little bit after our last <laughs> race, or during it, right before our last uh, final restart in Daytona. I think an issue with a right rear tire. Remember, these drivers and teams are not allowed to change tires under green unless a tire or wheel is damaged. Now, I'm thinking they probably think that, that if that tire is not flat, that they probably think that wheel was loose, which is pretty surprising because they, these drivers qualified on these tires. So they should they should have not been Heather, what a are they saying? where they could get loose. Well, I'm looking at the tire right now to check to see if it's down. It's aired up, so I'm not sure that this is going to be a good call for them, but they're looking it over to see if there's a small puncture or not. They're getting a water bottle out to test and see, and they're waving their hands over the tread of that tire. But Andy Jankowiak, this is his first start here at Phoenix Raceway, and he said he really loves this racetrack. He said, it's going to take me some time to get up to speed and get used to it. But as you can see here, the team looking at the tire, trying to see what the indication was. And what was that quote he gave us on the radio, Phil? I think he, he's going to back off when he sees God or the checkered flag. He or, committed. Yeah. Oh, he's he committed. He, yeah, he was he's full sand. He's not until he sees God or <laughs> yeah, the checkered flag. Exactly, line. exactly. Most and he made shirts. They can talk about it, but he actually did it. I mean, he was full force until they were flying over him. <laughs> they made T-shirts. He told me he sold a 1,000 of them. <laughs> this is a great battle. Just outside the top 10, LeVar Scott and Connor Mosack. First time we've seen Connor Mosack in the 28. He just pops up all over the place. He runs some truck races. We've seen him here, the Xfinity Series. And LeVar Scott, another one of our uh, full-timers, going yeah. to the national championship. Connor had a top five finish last year at Watkins Glen in the Xfinity Series. Does a lot of T. He's actually going to run full-time this year in the TA2 Series for Trans Am. Well, and we've seen that 28 car have a lot of success with Shane Huffman on the box. Last year, they won some races. I think it was Iowa that they won, and uh, I'm sure he's excited to get this opportunity to come and drive this car. 
Isabella Robusto in the 55. Nice battle for sixth right here. She's on the move. She Look, is. Her car looks a little bit loose, too. You, you said she likes it loose. It looks a little bit loose. <laughs> Well, the only way she could go, uh, the only thing she could go off of was the simulation. And she really felt like she wanted her car set up looser. So, I mean, as a crew chief, it's got to be tough because typically for a rookie, you want to tighten that car up oh, yeah. and put it in the fence on the first lap. It's Isabella Robusto running sixth right now, but it's all William Sawalich out front. You're watching the Arkham Menard series from Phoenix. And welcome back to the General Tire 150. While we were away, we had a change for the lead. Perhaps this could be one of our Reese's Sweet Move nominees, guys. We're going to watch William Sawalich come up on this lap car of Ryan Roulette. William thought that Ryan was going to stay up, but Ryan came down a little bit. Yep. He came to pit road right after that, and it looked like they were working on the radio. So it could have been a radio issue, and him not really know, know that uh, that William was there. But then it cost William the lead. When we saw it, we're like, did he not know he was there? <laughs> and then it turns out he didn't. He did have to get that radio changed out. So Gio Ruggiero, first Arkham Menard Series National Series race, and here he is as the leader. Leading laps. That's what he's here to do. That's what you're expected to do when you're with that team, that's, right? That's right. We talked about the East and the West. Well, he ran an East race for the Venturinis last year, and it was because, as you mentioned, Isabella Robusto was supposed to have run that race, and because of that concussion, she wasn't able to do it, so Gio jumped in there, and he will run about half, or eight, half these races, as well as the East primary races. Let's get an update on our leader, Heather. 
And this is only the second time he's been in an ARCA car, and very impressive to start things off. He said, I'm excited to be in this equipment, and I have big shoes to fill because Jesse Love and Shannon Rush last year, they won 10 races, and he said he's going to do whatever it takes to win. And one guy he looks up to is Kyle Busch. He said the reason I look up to him is because he's win when he's in a position to win, he does whatever he can to make that happen. So we'll see if he can do that here tonight. I love it. We asked him that question earlier today, and he just lit up and smiled and said, Kyle Busch. That's what I look <laughs> up to. How about this battle on the right side, though? You see, that's Isabella Robusto in that 55 car. She has just gotten solidly better and better and better. As Trevor, you were watching the scoring monitor, her lap times are matching the leader. Yeah, and the thing that's really impressed me is she has not wasted time. When she has caught someone, we know there's an art to that, right? You catch them, and maybe they hold you up for three or four laps, but she has made quick work. She gets to their bumper, makes the pass. She has great race craft to have never been in one of these style of cars. And not to mention, Sean Hingarani, the guy in the 61, is the West champion from right. last year. Won four times, knows how to get it done, and she's right there on his tail. Yeah, she's doing a really, really nice job. Where her car looks really good here right now is down here in turns three and four. They're headed into turn one right now. She's able to wrap the bottom very well with a lot of speed. We see her kind of diving down into that clean air. That's something she's going to have to learn tonight. She's been in super late models. They're not very aerodependent. They haven't been to one mile racetracks like this. So as she comes to this track, she's got to kind of figure out where's that balance. You'll see her get on that yellow line and hold it all the way around the corner, unlike King Arani, where he pushes up off of it. That helps her car get in clean air. Yeah, she told me that that was one of the things that she you can't really simulate as well as the air. So she's, that's going to be a huge learning curve for me. And right and now, Ronnie I think really she's passing. really loose there, too. He's, yeah. he's sideways getting yeah. in. A lot of lap traffic for our leaders right now. Gio Ruggiero continues to lead in the 20. William Sawalich behind him in the 18. Grant Enfinger hanging there. I just saw this stat from our stat boys. Grant Enfinger, the only driver in the top seven who isn't a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> the youth movement is well and alive here in the Arkham Menard series. And that's why it's so fun to watch this series, because we talk about these kids here. Those are the kids we're going to see in the truck series, the Xfinity series, and racing on Sundays. And we've seen it with Corey Heim, Ty Gibbs. Um, who else? Nick Sanchez. Yeah. I mean, we, he was running in the Arkham Menard series, won the championship, and now just got his yeah, first Roger truck series win. As well there. We just keep moving drivers up. And I bet Grant Enfinger did didn't feel that old until today. He's like, what is going on here? Well, when he watches this race back and you tell him that he was the only driver in the top seven, that's not a teenager. He's going to really feel old, and oh, he should. Yeah. Isabella's been able to get by Hingarani. Yeah, check out his wheel right there, yeah. just getting loose. You see that left front tire moving around on Hingarani. He's definitely battling that on entry. Remember, these teams will have an opportunity on or around lap number 75 to work on these cars. They'll change four tires, put fuel in. We were talking about, Trevor, talking about uh, who's won these ARCA Series races and championships. These are the last three champions. You see Jesse Love, our most recent champion. He's almost led 200 laps yeah. in three Xfinity races this year. And two poles, by the and way. two poles. Nick Sanchez, we know what he did at Daytona to get his first win. And Rev Racing's first win in the Truck Series. And how about Ty Gibbs, full-time Cup Series Xfinity champion right on top of winning the Arkham and Art Series Championship the very next year. And Ty Gibbs, he's knocking on the door. He's going to win a cup race this year. Definitely is. And we've seen career paths like that before, right? Joey Logano ran in this series and then moved up. But I think what Ty Gibbs did, winning a championship here, winning an Xfinity Championship the next year, and then thinking in his mind, I'm going to go contend for a cup championship the very next year, it really showed how quickly these drivers can progress. And once they see that possibility, it just fires them up to say, hey, I can do that. I can go win. You know, you think about Jesse Love in the – in the Xfinity Series right away here battling for Great win. battle for ninth. Tony Breidinger in that Canes, number 25. Connor Mosack in the 28. You know, and people always ask, I know they ask you guys as well, who's next? Who are the kids coming up? Who are the women coming up? Who do we root for? This is the series to watch to see where it's happening, who's coming up the pipeline. And we talk about um, these women and what they've done. I mean, Tony Breidinger with the Toyota program and what they've done. And Robusto, we've talked about, she's been in the Toyota pipeline for a couple of years. They really believe in her. She's in a national national ad campaign for them and they know what she's capable of yeah but how about the job tony did last year she had some really great races some strong top fives she actually finished third at kansas which is her best career finish but really strong on some short, short tracks as well which are really really challenging for somebody that doesn't have a lot of experience it's a battle for Tyler the seventh right position there. right there that's chris wright 
The 15, that's another one of the Venturini cars. That will be full-time this year, along with Tony and Amber Balkin. Yeah, Venturini Motorsports, five full-time cars, and two of them right here are the ladies. Tony Breidinger, full-time, Amber Balkin. Danica Dart making her ARCA debut. She had trouble, though, lap number two. She was involved in that incident. And then Isabella Robusto. I mean, just a tremendous athlete, what she's been able to accomplish now at age 19, trying to <laughs> make a splash in the ARCA series. Gio Ruggiero continues to lead. If you've been anywhere in Phoenix, you've seen billboards with Tony. That's for sure. Raising Canes, they've had them everywhere around yes, here. Yes, you have. And Isabella Robusto making a move, going to the front. Stay with us. What a great way to celebrate International Women's Day. Tony Breidinger invited out about 15 young ladies from all over the country. They went go-karting. They're racers from all over, and they're here at the racetrack taking in their first ARCA race, NASCAR. They all got to join her on the grid at the car. The future is strong. These women all have high hopes. They want to be the next Tony Breidinger or Isabella Robusto. And what a performance the women are putting on tonight. That's Tony Breidinger running 10th right now. By the way, Canes, her sponsor, is all about pushing women in motorsports. They donated $100,000 to the Women's Sports Foundation, the Billie Jean King Foundation, to promote motorsports and women going forward. I think that's awesome. Let's get an update on the 16, Josh.
And just an update, guys, on the 16 of Jack Wood. And you guys were asking earlier where he was. Well, he's running right now in the 13th position. He came over the radio just a little while ago and said, I'm just free everywhere. This car feels like it doesn't know where it wants to load. And after talking to Jack earlier today, he talked about the fact that this is the most confident and calm he's been in a long time heading into the season. This is a team that he grew up about 10 miles away from Bill McAnally's shop. And he said he's excited to be in the 16 car this year, not race against it. But right now he's having his struggles, guys. Yeah, and Jack Wood from Loomis, California. He's in this famous number 16. If you know anything about the West Coast and the West Series and ARCA, 11-time champion. So to, to have this ride is a big deal for Jack Wood, who gets a chance to go for the championship. Yeah, and I really expected him to be a contender for the win tonight. We saw him battling for the lead last year in this race, and when he got together uh, on a restart and, and crashed. But, you know, this 16 car, as you mentioned with Bill McAnally, is always a threat at these races. And, and Bill, even on the Truck Series now, has turned a team into a winning team at that level. We've seen what Christian Eckes has done, and uh, I know that that's taken a little bit of attention away from the ARCA team, but he said this year he's full focused on both and going to make sure, oh, really loose there into the corner there. They just lost a spot to the 35 of Greg Van Alst. Yeah, I talked to Jack down in the garage and after practice, and he said he thought he was pretty good. But obviously, we talked about the racetrack changing, the racetrack cooling off. A lot of times that will have a tendency to make these cars drive a little bit looser. And I think right now he's needing some some changes during this break here. We've got about 25 laps to go to this break. Yeah, and at lap 50 here, you can really see the balance struggles of these drivers. You see him pushing up off the bottom. I'm watching William Sawalich, who's lost a little bit of time here to Ruggiero as he's checked out a little bit, just running a few tenths a lap faster every single lap. And he's able to hug that yellow line. We talked about it. On Sunday, we'll see the cup drivers work the top. But in these ARCA cars, you're just not able to. you got to stay right around that yellow line. And Geo's doing that very well right now. Yeah, these ARCA cars have essentially the same motor for the most part as the Truck Series guys, the Elmore engine. and they But they're restricted here in the ARCA Menard Series more so than they are in the Truck Series. They have about 600 horsepower. We're probably 700 plus in the Truck Series. I just find this fascinating that Gio Ruggiero has a four-second lead over William Sawalich because I think coming in, it was easy to say that 18 is going to be the one to beat. I don't know that we can say William Sawalich was, had a four-second deficit if you combine all the races <laughs> from last year, even the ones he didn't win. Incredible racer. Well, one thing that makes drivers good or bad as a simple way to say it is their ability to give feedback to their crew chief and make their cars better we see a lot of times in in every series where the person who wins the race does not start off with the best car but they're patient they have great race craft they know how to dial their car in so i would look at william and say with his experience especially here at phoenix winning races knowing what that car needs he's going to give a lot of feedback to his team and they're going to make it better in this break that's coming up in 20 laps and we talked about jesse love and shannon rush doing that last year how many times they were able to make that car considerably better if they were off a little bit to start. That's the threat William has to worry about. It. Shannon Rush is still in the box of that 20 car that's <laughs> out there leading the race right now. We're working lap 55 here at Phoenix Raceway. 95 laps to go. These drivers, they got their hands full. They want to get in there and get a pit stop if these cars tuned up.
ARCA Racing on FS1 is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And by Bounty. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. And welcome back to Richmond Raceway. Caution is out for the second time. An incident in turn three. Yeah, David Smith, the 0-5, who was involved in that very first incident we had on lap number two, is involved along with Jake Bowman in the 88 car. That was one of our onboards. I'm going to say he got a good shot of that. A lot it, of damage in his window nets not down yet. Yeah, Jake was running in the 16th position when that happened. Mm, see him catching his breath there a little bit. Just a reminder that... Ooh. We had a safety truck coming up onto the track, if you heard me there. <laughs> Another car coming at full speed around the racetrack. That was uh, a reminder. We like to see that window net down. That gives right. everybody an idea that they are OK. So we're waiting. See if that's there's a car going, trying to go under the 05. See him on the brakes. Yeah, getting that's, the, that's the 19 of Eric Johnson Jr. I don't think uh, Jake's going to come along gonna there. Have that's anywhere to go here. There's absolutely nowhere to go. In that corner, you're already max brake getting in. Yeah, so you're, you're, somebody you're, as hard as you can, you're in there as hard as you That's can go. Right. You, you can't go any farther. Can't slow down anymore. Yeah. It's going to be get a great look from the onboard, Jake Bowman. Just watch how fast yeah. this happens. Already, like on you the said, already he, he backed off that last second that he could and can't see anything. Absolutely nowhere to go. Hard, hard contact with the back of the 05 car. Well, and once he got off the racetrack, there's so many marbles up there from the tire buildup uh, as it wears off. Nobody's run that high yet. So at this point, he's, as you said, along for the ride. You saw Jake, he saw him wiggle a little bit. He was trying to get slowed down. But as, as you mentioned, Trevor, he's, he's already, he's in the corner as hard as he can get in the corner. And he's on the brakes as hard as he can use the brakes. So it's not, it's not easy just to turn these things left yep. and avoid something like that. The 19 is the other McAnally car. Okay, that's a good sign. Window net down. Sixty-three laps into the Arkham Menard series here as we're under caution for the second incident of the evening involving three drivers. This we'll be back.
ARCA Racing on FS1 is brought to you by General Tire. General Tire delivers the freedom to explore. And by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Reese's, not sorry. And we welcome you back to Arkham and Arts Series action. Jamie Little, Trevor Bain, Phil Parsons with you. Heather DeVoe, Josh Sims on pit road. And who's that guy? Heim time. Time I'm time. Corey Heim. I know there's no truck race this weekend, but he's running the Xfinity Series. That's coming up tomorrow, running for Sam Hunt Racing. He's going to run several races, I think, for Sam, right? Yeah, he's going to run a, quite a few. And then he'll be here on standby on Sunday every single week for the Cup Series for Legacy Motor Club 2311, just in case he's ever needed. I texted him earlier, asked if he's tired of spectating yet. He's ready to get that <laughs> race car tomorrow, I'm sure. He's another one of those drivers that performed here in the Arkham Menard Series. Remember that battle when we talked about Ty Gibbs winning the championship? Well, he, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ty Gibbs, finished first. They won like 16 races between them that year, finishing first and second points. So Corey Heim used this as a springboard onto the truck series. And what team was he with? <laughs> <laughs> the 20 that's leading yeah, that's this right. race. Yeah. That just highlights how fast Ty Gibbs' move was, though, right? Because Corey Heim, we would say, has progressed very quickly. Very Even quickly. in the truck series, you know, battled for that championship last year. He's going to do it again, hopefully, this year. But that's quick. And then we have Ty Gibbs already in the Cup Series. So I'm sure that builds that fire up in Corey Heim even more. Well, you remember when, when Ty was racing for that Arc of Menards championship, he was winning Xfinity races as well that same yep. year. He won his very first start ever on the road course at Daytona. That year he won That's the ARCA right. championship. Well, we keep talking about the guy who drove the 20 last year, who dominated, won 50% of the races. He's here, Heather. And Jesse Love, as you mentioned, 2023 ARCA Menard Series champion. But once you're part of the Venturini Motorsports team, you're family. So I've seen you down on pit road talking to Caden Lapsovich. What are you looking at as far as Tony Breidinger goes? Yeah, just fixing some small things, some things that I've learned here, help her out. and. Yeah, like I said, this is weird. I'm getting interviewed out of my fire suit, so I still got all my wheel and colors on, but no suit this time. So, yeah, I mean, I owe so much to Billy Venturini, Shannon Rush, everybody at the Venturini Motorsports deal, and it's my way of just showing how much I care for them and how much I love this race team, and obviously I love the Arca Series. So it's a good race, and, uh, and our guys are doing really well right now. Thank you for your time. Good to see you. It says a lot about that young man. You know, he's no longer with Toyota. He's moved over to RCR and Chevrolet. But his alliance with that team, Ventrini, what they did for him, Billy says the same thing. It's like one of his kids. And to see him come back and give back and give feedback and be here means a lot. And for him, it's fresh on his mind. I mean, he just went through this learning curve that these young drivers like Tony are going through. So he's probably the best person in the garage to ask, maybe even over a cup driver that has different insight. But for him, he just drove these cars and knows what he learned. But he's missing it. I I'm sure. <laughs> drivers don't like to be in street clothes. You heard him say, I wish I was yeah. in my fire suit. Well, when you move up a level, suddenly I mean, the matter. competition is you that You still want to be more. here. <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, it's like Grant Enfinger. He's yes. one of those drivers that runs for a truck series championship. Gio Ruggiero from Seekonk, Massachusetts, leads William Sawalich from Eden Prairie, Minnesota on the front row. Side by side, what a great restart. No saving anything here. It's a shootout till this break at lap 75. Let's see what this thing's got. Grand Enfinger in the 23, Isabella Robusto in the 55. Well, you have a hang yeah. on the door there. Yeah, yeah, hanging in there on the outside. That slight edge going down the back straightaway. How about that sunset showing off, off in the distance? Absolutely beautiful as they go door to door through turn three, side by side they go. Really surprised that William was able to stay on the outside of him right there in turn three. Got those tires cooled down and that car's coming back to life. They oh, are really inches loose. apart, loosened to each other, hanging on to it. Gio in his first national start, hanging on, battling the 18. Greg Van Alst goes around. Looks like Sawalish, they will, they will look back at the most recent scoring loop to see who was ahead at the time of the caution. And caution is out for the third time here as we're just a few laps away from that stage break. Greg was running in the 12th spot, one of the 14 cars that we have on the lead lap right now. Greg Van Alst got a local sponsor to come on board. And he's doing that throughout the series, trying to run full time, but he needs a little bit of help. Actually running a second car for the, the 34 of Isaac Johnson. Take a look at the spin here. He's on the inside. I believe it's that Andres Perez. Or no, that's LeVar Scott. Mm -hmm. The two cars look very much alike. Just lost the air to that, that rear oh. spoiler and got loose. 
did a nice job keeping that car out of the outside wall as they go by inside and, and outside. Vulcan, heads up yeah. move, just avoided him. Right here, we got Marco Andretti's on board. We said it might see some action, and it did right here. Third Marco, grab a gear, grab a third gear, and drive by on the inside. Good heads up move by Marco. We're on lap number 70, getting ready to complete lap number 70, so that may bring us to the to the race break. I haven't gotten the official word yet, but they will be able to bring him down pit road. Watch through the watch through the windshield. Watch the hands on Jiro Ruggiero in that 20 car. And this is something he's never experienced before. You're not going to get that experience in a late model with somebody on your door. He actually said that to us in the garage. I've never gotten arrow loose before. So this is a first. You're seeing it live right here for Gio. Oh, that's what arrow loose and, is. And it's so easy for him to, to, to turn the steering with too much, trying to stay off right. William Sawalich. And William and got trouble. away from him a little bit there yeah, to give him yeah. some room. Gio, thank you for wearing white gloves. <laughs> I love when you drivers sh do that. They should be right. required. They should be required. I mean, that was incredible to watch that in slow motion. Now the leaders here can choose which lane they want to go in. So if you're William Sawalich, you just got the lead from the outside. But we know majority of the time in any series, the leader's going to take the bottom. So for him, he does at least have a tiny question mark in my head of what lane do I choose here? Yeah, that, those are, the leader is the only one that can choose. And the Arkham Menard series, we don't choose like we do in all the three NASCAR national series. Tanner Reif, the 42, back in 15th. He is the free pass. Great, great news for him. He's gained 23 positions since the start of this race. He's the older brother to Tyler Reif, the winner last year here. Tyler right now running in the fifth spot, doing a really nice job. You saw Grant Enfinger able to grab that third spot on that restart and hold it till the caution came out. We've talked a lot about Isabella Robusto running fourth right now. She is our bounty rookie spotlight. Let's get to know her a little bit better. We've talked about what an athlete. I mean, this woman, you talk to her and you're like, you have played a lot of sports. Yeah. <laughs> I've known her since she was about eight, so it's hard for me to look at her as a woman. There it is right there, making her Arca Menard series debut. About a year delayed because she had an injury, had a major concussion. She missed April to January of racing. How about the fact that she's also going to school, going to college to be an aero engineer? Aerospace engineer. Aerospace engineer. And she said she's never seen her college campus. It's out here in Phoenix. Arizona, Arizona State. State. It's Arizona, Arizona State. State. Yeah. So yeah. she's out here, never been to her school before for two years, so she's gonna see that tomorrow for the very first time in person. <laughs> she said she actually applies that to what she does in the simulator, and she loves numbers, so she's working the numbers. It's helping her to understand the race car more. This woman's the real deal. And it's interesting because she talked about that. She said, I wanna know what's going on in the race car, and there's kind of two schools of thought. You've got Kyle Larson on one spectrum that says, I don't know anything about him, I don't wanna know, I'll tell you what it's doing, and then you have drivers like, you know, I think about guys like Ryan Newman that have those engineering degrees that break everything down. Even Kyle Busch is very, you know, very hands on, very literate in how he talks about a race car, but it's uh, you can have that school of thought. And so I think that's great that she's going to school to learn with that mindset. Well, the sport is evolving so much. You look at the list of crew chiefs now. They're all engineers. You have to have an engineering degree. You've had to know how to work on these race cars. They always give other racing series all the credit. NASCAR is right there with them when it comes to engineers and how important they are to making these race cars fast. So William Sawalich in the 18 scored his first here for this restart. There's Shannon Rush, a little stressed out. Were you <laughs> I would say so. That? <laughs> Shannon, it's not the last lap. We got a break here, buddy. Got some yeah. time. Gio Ruggiero in the 20 on the inside. Grant Enfinger and Isabella Robusto in the 55 on the outside so second Swalich row. the outside here. See if it pays off. You like for that? Him. I don't know. The bottom normally for the front row is pretty dominant because of that dog leg we talk about. We'll see what kind of jump he gets. That's going to be the key is what kind of launch do you get out of the box? These two states side by side for a couple of laps. Whoa, big restart for the 18 once again. William Sawalich on it. The 20 goes down low into the dog leg. There's sparks. We've got him three wide as they head into turn one. Look at Jack Wood on the inside. Jack made a pit stop to work on that car. Stayed on the lead lap. Now he's racing up in the top 10 Here on the comes inside. Isabella Robusto <laughs> trying to take over the third spot from Grant Enfinger as she's side by side with him. Enfinger threw a huge slide job down there in turns one and two, but she's fighting back. Oh, going to get loose here with him on her door. Does a nice job staying off, Grant Enfinger. Sean Hangarani in the 61 wants a piece of that. Yep. We're expecting the caution flag to come out any time. They're going to have that scheduled stop. 
I saw sparks flying in that shot. And there it is. Flag is out. This will be our scheduled break. They'll be able to bring them down, make adjustments, take fuel, take tires. Yeah, once, once the last car stops on pit road, then they'll have five minutes to make those adjustments. So we're officially at the halfway point for the Arca Menard Series from Phoenix Raceway. We'll have pit stops coming up next. Welcome back to the General Tire 150. As you see, pit road is open for business. Pit stops look a little bit different in the Arkham and Art series. Yeah, I think it's a it's a cost saving move. They don't have to have the high dollar pit crews, the, the athletes, the former college football players. They can have anybody go over the wall, maximum of four. They can put fuel and tires, but they cannot do it at the same time. They have to do one or the other first. But again, they have five minutes to change tires, add fuel, and make whatever changes they would like to make. And that means that Josh Sims can take his time and breathe a little <laughs> bit when you tell us what changes they're making, Josh. Yeah, we're just going to start with the 13 of Tyler Reif. Of course, we know he won this race last year, albeit with a different team. He knew they had a transmission issue when it came to practice earlier today. Got that patched up. Now, as far as this race, he said they've been loose all around on the track. And then he said he gets really tight when he gets on the brakes. So the team is going to try and make an adjustment to help him out. Heather? And for the 18 of William Swalich, he's just been battling a loose condition on that race car. His crew chief, Matt Ross, asked him, how many laps into the run does it get loose? He said, I start to feel it about 10 by 15. I've lost all grip. So they're going to take a pretty big swing at the 18 here to fire him up or to tighten him up. Josh. All right, and let's talk about Tyler Reif. We talked about the fact that he won this race here last year. His biggest complaint, he's been loose all the way around and then really tight when he gets on the brakes, so they're going to make an adjustment to try and help him out. And Tyler Reif cooling off as well. It's fun to see what they're doing. They're even putting the fans, <laughs> trying to cool the engine a little bit. But you mentioned the top of the show. The weather is perfect. I mean, high 60s, now probably mid 60s as the sun went down. It's ideal for race, ideal for these cars, ideal for the tires, drivers. And we are fully under the lights now. There's no sun left in the sky. Track's going to change a little bit again as they go back from this break. Sweating inside that race car, getting some water, hydrate. They'll get those tires on, fuel them up, and we'll get back to race in action momentarily. Stay with us.
Sunday on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series gets heated as the best drivers in the world take on the crown jewel in the desert. It's Phoenix right here, and the pre-race begins at 2.30 Eastern with engines firing at 3.30. That's Sunday on Fox. Earlier today, they actually got a real practice session. I know. Joey Logano fast again. Tyler Reddick had an issue. So it was interesting. These drivers had their hands full. It was. They could finally make some changes on their cars. It wasn't an impound type scenario where they can't do anything. And so, uh, man, Christopher Bell, he had amazing long run speed watching his car. Look for him to be a threat. And my uh, my buddies over at Legacy Motor Club, both of those guys in the top 10. So I was pretty proud yeah, of their speed. Good. good run for them. Let's quickly take a look at the Richmond mid-race report. We are officially at the halfway. As you see it here, 73 laps to go, two different leaders. Lead changes, too. It's been the same, too. It's been incredible <laughs> to watch. Ruggiero and Sawalich. Going to be really interesting to see what maybe Isabella Robusto can do now that she's going to be in close contact with these guys in the front row. We think we think that she has probably as fast a car, possibly, as, as the front two. Really doing a nice job with it. Her lap times have matched the leaders pretty much any time that she's not been passing someone, which she made up a lot of progress. We saw her go back to eighth and then able to drive into the top three by the end of that run. Actually was gaining on Williams to Wallach quite a bit. The only car that kept the gap was Geo there in the lead. So we'll see what she has here on the restart, as you mentioned. And also, you know, as we talked about at the beginning of the race, no experience dialing in one of these cars. So we'll see if that experience for Williams to Wallach pays off here. And Grant Enfinger, don't count him out. Yeah, exactly. Josh, yes. let's get an update on the 16 of Jack Wood. Yeah, and when I talked to you guys earlier, he talked about the fact that he was free all the way around the track. So even before the break, they came in and made an adjustment, a wedge adjustment to see if they can help him out. Well, after that, when he came back over the radio, he said, hey, I was a 10 out of 10 free before that adjustment. Now a 3 out of 10. I need just a little bit more. So when they came in, they adjusted him a little more, and he feels a lot better about that car right now, guys. Guys, remember, he was the last car on the lead lap, running about 15th or 16th, and he made so many passes on that very brief restart. He's already up to sixth. Making some great adjustments. Let's see what they'll do now after a little bit more adjusting on that 16. It's Kevin Bellacourt is the crew chief. He is also full time over on the truck series as well. <laughs> Jack Woods running some of those. And he just thought he had a weekend off, right? Yes. He said, no weeks <laughs> off for you, buddy. But the guy has a lot of energy and obviously knows what he's doing, going in the right direction, adjusting on this 16. Yeah, a lot of experience. We talk about the relatively inexperience of a lot of the drivers, but a lot of those drivers were paired with people with crew chiefs with a lot of experience, and that certainly helps. Yeah, even uh, I think about Mark McFarland playing a role with Sean Hinger, Ronnie's team this weekend, not as the crew chief, but he's kind of there advising a little bit. We saw his success at Joe Gibbs Racing. Think about crew chiefs like Shane Huffman on the 28. I raced with those guys. I mean, they were great <laughs> race car drivers. drivers. Yeah. Great we drivers. About, yeah. And so now they're making great crew chiefs, but they're also good coaches for these young guys. Looking at another guy that had a crew chief change this year, Andres Perez up in the eighth spot right now in the two car. He was talking to his guys down in the garage here, and they wanted to give a shout out to Bobby Gill, one of, <laughs> one of a great short track racer over the years, especially, you know, down in the southeast or whatever. He's going through some health issues, and they want to certainly send a shout out to them that they miss him and hope he gets home soon. Yes. And Bobby Gill, I haven't heard that name in a minute, but it brought up a little bit of a sour memory for me. I was leading at <laughs> Bristol at 15, and Bobby Gill was a, the old veteran that put it on me, turned me off a of turn two. But, uh, man, I learned so much from that guy racing around him and um, hope he gets better soon. Rev Racing with two cars in the field. Andres Perez, LeVar Scott, both full-time. Rev Racing, man, they've got to be excited. What's happened with Raja Karuth, oh, gosh. one of their guys, got yeah. the win in trucks last week in Vegas. Yeah. Not to mention Nick what Nick Sanchez did at Daytona. At Daytona. Yeah. So they really have some quality drivers coming through that pipeline, really helping them to get to the next level. And Andres sees that pipeline. He sees that there's a future there if yeah, he can make yes, races does. count. There's a path. There's a path, that's right. William Sawalich, Gio Ruggiero. Grant Enfinger, Isabella Robusto, the top four with 71 laps to go at Phoenix. 20 car got a great launch this time. I don't think William Swalich is going to be clear on entry. We'll see if he can hold tight apart. on the outside. So how drastic the bump is. 
as you drive back up on the racetrack. Sean Hingarani way down there on the inside, trying to make a move into third. You see him right there. Isabella Robusto side by side with him, battling for that fourth position. And then there's Jack Wood with all those adjustments to that 16 machine. Tyler Wright right, yeah, trying to get in the mix year, there. The 13, that's right. Somebody just tell these drivers it's go time with 10 <laughs> laps to go or something. We've got 69 laps to go, and this is a good one. Look how violent that is, getting back up onto the straightaway. In here in the booth and at home on TV, it doesn't look that bad, but when you go across that, it is violent. I think Grant Enfinger said today that is one of the most violent parts of any track that we race on. Connor Mosak, the 28, moving up here in the top 10, racing. For the six spots, six, seven, eight spots right there. Got four fresh Fruit Loops on these things. They got the confidence <laughs> high right I now. I love it. Full of fuel, and you see the sparks flying. Hank Parker Jr. used to say, poor Mr. Feel Good. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> Feel good till they don't. <laughs> so Swalich has command of this race again. Once Gio got around him earlier, he never looked back. I think he got about a four and a half second lead was his biggest gap. But they've got Swalich hooked up now. Well, so Wallace knows his car went loose around lap 10 or 15, so he's trying to make hay while he can, get that gap extended, but you're also trying to take care of the tires. If you know you're going to get loose, you don't want to slip them right now, so he needs to manage that gap, make sure he doesn't get too far out. We were just talking about the two and the six car for Rev Racing. I mean, what they have done in this series, and now, of course, they moved up. They're in the truck series. They've already got that win with Nick Sanchez. And you see here, Rev Racing wow. alumni. How about those names? <laughs> it's pretty stout. Not I've, too I've, shabby. I've heard of some of those guys before. <laughs> I mean, look at the year they've had already. Daniel Suarez, huge win in Atlanta. Yeah, Nick Kyle Sanchez. Arch Four of the five have won races yeah. this year in their series. And Bubba, Bubba Will. And yes, Bubba Will. You're next, buddy. Well, and Max Siegel, who, who runs this organization, actually was the president at Dell Earnhardt Incorporated when I was 15 years old back in 2007. I signed with DEI, and Max Siegel's the one that signed my contract. Unbelievable. He signed you with those. those awesome, I was, those I was highlights. trying to look like Phil. I was going to his I, I thought maybe his hair got darker <laughs> over the years. Is. Yeah. I think it normally goes the other way. If I still have any, I just hope it can turn gray. I believe they were called frosted tips Fro back oh, in the yeah. day, right? Hey, our buddy Jamie McMurray here at Fox, he oh. had those too. I'm not alone in this. It was cool back <laughs> he then. He was the king. His hair is still the same style it was. <laughs> I'm just glad mine's not spiked up right there because it used to be full on. Didn't have enough gel in the stores for that hair. There's this battle just outside the top 10. That's a battle for 11th with Tony Breidinger and LaVar Scott. And Tony Breidinger hanging right there, 10th and 11th all race long. So Swalich and Ruggiero up front, Enfinger, Hingarani, Isabella Robusto, top five right now. Yeah, I think Grant Enfinger's made some good improvements on his car as Connor Mozak has as well as he's moving forward, trying to battle with Jack Wood for this sixth spot. Going to use that dog leg that we talk about. He's got the dog in him. Got the dog. See that? Yeah. <laughs> it messes up your entry angle, though. We see him slide up in the center of the corner, and that's because he's so shallow getting in because of your perspective. You come off that dog leg, and you don't get all the way out to the wall. Makes it really hard to run a good corner, but still able to take away that spot. I was talking to Shane Huffman, the crew chief on that 28 car for Connor, and he said they didn't know what happened, and they, they didn't feel like they got enough temperature in the engine for hmm. qualifying. Just didn't feel like it came up to speed, but right now Connor's doing a great job up to the sixth spot. Let's get an update on the 28th of Mosak. Josh. Yeah, the biggest complaint for Connor Mosak in this race so far was one and two. Earlier he's saying, I am just too loose to one and two. Well, the team telling them, just do your best to maintain, and we got to make it up in three and four. Well, you see, after those adjustments during that last stop, the car is getting better. He's been moving up spots, and this is a guy who's super confident, had an Xfinity race here last year, said that went really well, and this is one of the tracks where he's got a lot of laps and feels good about. Well, I mentioned, Josh, earlier in the show that this guy has popped up all different teams in different series he got that big win at kansas driving for gibbs he was driving the 18. what he's a moment he's going to run some truck races this year i think for a couple different teams as you mentioned he's liable to pop up anywhere again running full time in the trans am ta2 series and back to our leader i mean williams walsh in the 18 this is a joe gibbs racing machine and it's the only one that they run one car oh. and we've got a car around the 34 it's isaac, isaac johnson yeah. That's a teammate to Greg Van Alst. 
Well, they're having a tough day then at that team, aren't they, Phil? Yeah, you see the sponsor, Endress and Hauser. That's uh, that's he works full time for them. He's the sales engineer for that hmm. for that uh, company, and they're sponsoring him here. So that's nice. And he was running 19th at the time. So that brings out the caution for the fifth time tonight for this incident right here. Set, pesky turn one, turn three. My goal for this year is to just focus on racing, and that's going to be my only plan, you know. I feel like if I put in enough work, you know, I can be a NASCAR driver someday, so. That's it. That's the game plan for the 19-year-old Gio Ruggiero. He's trying to do something that both Trevor Bain and Phil Parsons did. Win in your first race in the Arkham and Art Series. Love that. Hey, yeah, that, come on, that, Phil. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Trevor Bain, by the way, is one for one. One start, I'll take one it. win. Yeah. I'm good, batting a thousand. Yep. Yeah, I had four starts in the in the Arca Series back in the day. Well, we had a, another Reese's Sweet Move of the race nominee. It's right here. Going to be Marco Andretti. Watch this look here of this spin. Oh, loose into turn three there. Yeah. You, you heard him gas it up to get by that cart before it could back up the up the racetrack. Visit ArcaRacing.com on Monday at 3 Eastern to see who is crowned the Reese's Sweet Move of the race. So we've had a couple good ones already. Maybe maybe the eventual pass for the win, where it might, wherever it may be, or will William Sawalich hold on to the end? William's at, liking that outside there. Yeah. He keeps picking it and making it work. So watch Dio try to move him up. Watch Dio try to yep. move him up off the bottom. Packed up and ready to go. William Sawalich, Gio Ruggiero, 
Graham and Finger, Sean Hangarani, Robusto oh. in the third row. Clear. Clear. That was almost <laughs> what happened last year to William Sawalich. Cleared himself coming Four down for the block. Four wide into turn one. Five wide. Look at Isabella Robusto. Looks like she's headed to pit road or down there, <laughs> but she's going to come back up. She's figuring it out, working all around. Oh, Jack tight Wood, there. contact oh, oh. there with Tyler Reif, last year's winner, side by side. Everybody keeps it straight. Yeah, at least these bodies are all composite bodies, so you're not going to have any metal from the body panels cutting a tire. Look at three wide, 50 feet from the racetrack. They're actually up, four wide. Just one car is a mile track. away. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even see it. It was so <laughs> right. far away. Down the screen. Sawalich, the leader right now, 47 laps and counting. Gio Ruggiero has led 49 laps tonight, so it has been a battle between these two. And this 55 has struggled a little bit since the break. She's not had the speed that we saw at the beginning of the race, but really, Phil, we weren't paying attention to her until about 20 laps in when her car came to life, so she's hoping for a long run here. Let's take a look back at that contact with Tyler Reif. See, four wide for a moment coming off the corner. He's on the outside, close to the wall right there. You saw his car start wiggling a little bit. I think he maybe was just trying to catch his car, made contact with that Napa car, Jack Wood. Yeah, for Jack Wood, he's just hoping the C doesn't close all the way up on him there. Robusto in the 55 had a little bit of that contact as well. Let's get an update on her, Heather. And Trevor, you mentioned Isabella struggling after that restart. She came over the radio and told her team that she's just too free and could, can't put the wheel in it like she wants to. And Billy Venturini told her, hey, the track is freeing up right now, so we need you to carry us for about 20 laps until that fuel burns off, and then the car will come to you. So Trevor, as a driver and your crew chief or your spotter tells you that, what are you doing if you had the wheel behind your hands right now? <laughs> Hang on, I think. Heather, it's, uh, it's tough when you have a loose race car at this racetrack because that is the problem you don't want to have. If you're tight, you can dime in the corner a little bit, but when you're free in and off here, that is a struggle. You can't push the gas down. Isabella told us earlier in the day, she doesn't really like to drive the thing with the steering wheel. She wants it unwound, feels like that keeps momentum, and she wants to drive it with that throttle pedal and help it rotate. But right now, she's finding out where that limit is. We said she loves a free race car, but this is a little bit too far, and now she sees, okay, the bad part is there's not probably another opportunity to work on this thing. Yes. So just take care of it. See what you can get out she's of it. She's going, can I come in for adjustments, please, one more time? <laughs> but she's got what she's got. And what Billy's saying is when the fuel burns off, that's going to gain nose weight for the car. And that should help that loose situation. You see her car now. She's she's adjusted to it. She's back in a rhythm all over the back of the 16 of Jack Wood and going to move to the inside now. Probably will make that pass. Isabella Robusto, the 19-year-old from Fort Mills, South Carolina. She was actually a kicker for the football team at her middle school, broke a bunch <laughs> of records. She was the first one at, a, at her school, it was a new school, to kick a field goal. Yeah, she's a stellar athlete. She's a runner, you name it. I mean, we talked to her today. She's just a true athlete and just smiles nonstop. This is her life. This is all she wants to do is be a racer, wants to get to the Cup Series and wants to win. She made that very clear talking to her. Well, we're 27 laps into this run, 25 laps in. So this car is starting to come to life a little bit, and that's what she's hoping for. I just remember as an eight-year-old when she started racing Bandoleros at Charlotte. So uh, it's, uh, it's amazing to see the progression on how she's been able to. And she wins races. She's been able to win races at Hickory Motor Speedway. That's one of the toughest places around to get a win. She runs in the Cars Tour. She runs the late models there. Late model stock division, I believe she said, is what she's running now. And she's racing all the time, especially now that she just was cleared from the doctors for her concussion and her issues that she sustained. That was at Hickory last April, right. battling for the lead when she had her accident. So incredible comeback for her. This will give her a lot of confidence as Isabella currently runs sixth. 46 laps to go. William Sawalich continues to lead. Can he get it done? Get a little bit of redemption. We'll find out.
middle school and high school, I did track and field. Uh, I did high jump, long jump, and a bunch of different running events and went to states for high jump and a couple of my running events and did really well in them. And then I was the football kicker on my middle school football team. I was the first one at the school to make a field goal because it was a new school um, and got a whole bunch of records there and love playing on the football team just because I was so used to racing with all of the guys that playing football with all the guys just kind of made sense. Well, we talked about it, Isabella Robusto, an incredible athlete, all the things that she has accomplished in her young career. And here she is. I mean, she's running sixth now, and that's the farthest back she's been all night long. Yeah, really impressive first start here for Isabella. See the biggest mover since our restart. Yeah, Grant Envinger is the one that stands out. I know it's only one position. Got a caution here, Jamie. So caution for lightning. So there's no rain that we have seen, but we've been watching this lightning storm kind of roll in. So our roof cameras, our man cameras are down, so we're limited at this point. So now ARCA decided to bring out the caution. I thought our weather woman, Jamie Little, told I us. I was told. Zero Zero. And it may not rain, right, Jamie? That's what we <laughs> hey, talked about. I am about. from the desert, <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> we have this... This we are in the weather, desert. heat, lightning. So but we are NASCAR. We, we like to make it rain. We do <laughs> everywhere we go. Uh, Take a look at this lightning right NASCAR. here. There's definitely lightning out there. Now, I went to the baseball game last night, the Reds and the Cubs, and there was lightning throughout the entire game off the outfield. Started in left field, went to left center, center field, right wow. center, right field. It never rained there, and they ran and they played nine. They don't have a protocol in the desert for lightning. Uh, They're like, ah, we don't know what that is. Yeah. We're just going to keep on going. It's a beautiful show that we've been watching, but it's certainly not safe for all. So I'm caution sure. is out here. I'm sure William Sawalich is fine if, uh, <laughs> if we want to go ahead and stop That's this thing right, right now. Yeah, the good thing for him is it's another chance to cool those tires, and we've seen how good he is on the short run. Was able to open up that gap there to a little over two seconds to Gio, who has been his biggest competition this whole race. Uh, I know one driver that probably wishes that we can go back racing, and that's Counter Mosak. Already up to the fourth position. That car's getting better and better and better. Gio Ruggiero says, give me another shot at yeah, it. I exactly. want to win in my National Series debut. So we've had two different leaders tonight, four lead changes, and it's been between the 18 and the 20. We're on our sixth caution of the evening. We hardly have ever said that before, that the lead is the battle between the 18 and 20. <laughs> no, right? we have a compilation that's like five minutes long. <laughs> I mean, there's a rivalry between oh, yeah. them. And yes, they're oh, yeah. both Toyota, but they're two different teams, and they want to beat each other bad. And multiple drivers. I mean, we've seen all kinds of combinations of who's in the 18 <laughs> or the 20 and switch it out, and it's still the same battle. Remember last year, Connor Mosek ran the 18 car several times because William Walsh is not yet old enough. We talked about the teenagers. If you're under the age of 18, there's a several places at the Arkham and Art Series races that you couldn't run. So Connor Mosek did that last year. He got a big win, too, at Kansas for the 18 team. Remember, that team won the owner's championship with those multiple drivers that you were talking about. As, as good as Jesse Love was winning 10 races, the 18 car actually won the owner's championship. And the ironic thing, I talked to Billy Venturini earlier, really his team came on the map when Joey Logano came over to drive their cars back when JD was here and they had a great relationship and he said, let's put Joey in your car and see what he can do. They went and won at Daytona and from there, Billy's team just turned on like a light switch. He was able to build that program, uh, won a race, ran well with Mark Davis um, and then they were able to just build this program up to what it is now, which is really the development program of Toyota. They continue to put drivers through this pipeline and pump them out the other side. Such a great story. Well, we have a lot of racing action still this weekend, but we also have a lot of hoops coming up tomorrow. It's a huge regular season finale on Fox. First 10th ranked Creighton takes on Villanova. That's at 2.30 Eastern. And then at 5, 8th ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in primetime, second ranked UConn faces Providence. It all tips off tomorrow on Fox. A lot of hoops happening every weekend, and we've got series after series after series all right here nascar on fox stay tuned mm -hmm. i love that story though that it goes back to joey logano back in those days with chevrolet when fort gibbs was even a toyota team i remember it well because i was growing up in the same time as joey and we were always kind of battling and he got that opportunity and man it just took off after that and now the venturinis 
by virtue of the win at Daytona a couple weeks ago, have won 100 wins in ARCA. Incredible. Wow. Here it is, the pipeline <laughs> to the top 100 wins, as you just mentioned, Phil. Five driver championships. Big Bill started goals. it back in 1987. They do a really, really nice job with that program. Good people, good good equipment. It's top notch. Yeah, good drivers. So they are bringing the cars down pit road. You hate to see that. We've got 35 laps remaining, but as we showed you, there's a lot of lightning in the area, and that is certainly not safe for the fans in the stands or our camera crew working. Let's take a look back at the last restart for another Reese's Sweet Move of the race nominee. Here it is. Right here, we've got a restart with the 20 and 18 that we were just talking about. We're going to see the 20 dive to the bottom, but William Sawalich is able to hang on that door. Well, they ran side by side this for at least a couple laps till the caution came out. And when the caution came out, William Sawalich was barely ahead of the 20 of okay. Ruggiero. Got that run on exit of turn two and was able to hold on to it. And that's ultimately how he's in the lead right now. Could be the race winning move. That's right. So we're going to step aside for a moment as we figure it out if we can continue racing. I hope we can. It's been a good night here at Phoenix. The ARCA officials have officially brought out the red, as you see William Sawalich and other drivers climbing from their race cars as we await word. If there's any chance we could get this thing fired back up, but lightning is in the area and that is why we were under red at the moment. But it's been a fun night. 
six different cautions now. Let's take a look back. There is a common theme here of arrow loose, Jamie. Almost all of these we're gonna watch. See a big pile up there, but check this out. Okay, that's not arrow loose. That's mechanical <laughs> loose right there. And turning down too early. Here's arrow loose. That's arrow there loose we right go. there for Greg Van Alsten, the 35 car. No harm, no foul. And that there we go car. again. Greg Isaac Van Alsten teammate around. there. That's right. And that's why we're under red right now. So here we are, as you see, 35 laps remaining in this race. It's the second Arca Menard Series national race of the season. 18 to go. I see Isabella Robusto out of her race car. Love to hear what she's discussing with her crew chief mm -hmm. right now. I mean, her first experience. <laughs> she's what, saying, can you sneak in a little adjustment? Yeah, this what, thing? We're gonna track do, bar what, down, what we're going to do right, right here, thing. I'm going to slide a little bit. One thing I do want to mention that I, I said that that the 18 won the owner's championship last year with multiple drivers. It actually was the 20 of Venturini Motorsports that won the uh, driver's cha or owner's championship, excuse me. Well, Venturini, they win so often, but right now they're sitting <laughs> second. Joe Gibbs Racing right now sitting first with William Sawalich. Last year he lost this one, said it's the one that got away. He won four times, four national races last year, won the ARCA East Championship, and now he's sitting here anxiously awaiting, saying, where is that lightning? I want this <laughs> I want race rain. to be called. I want rain. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and apparently, we just looked at the forecast, there is some rain out there, so I'm sorry if I knew? lied to you <laughs> Who knew? said zero. Well, the weather at that time said there was a zero percent <laughs> chance yes. of rain. It's like we're at the beach, right? Yeah, exactly. It pops up out of nowhere. Yeah. But we're in the desert. Yeah. I, well, that's, in a that's world. Even worse. So, so William Sawalich, we haven't talked too much about it. He does know how to get it done here at Phoenix. This was in November. Well, he kept talking about the one that got away, but how about the one he actually captured? He was able to get it done, get redemption here, win this race. And that's what he's leaning on tonight. We talked about it before that first break. Hey, he knows what a winning car feels like. Let's dial it into that. And they've done that so far. They made this car much better at that break, and he's been able to drive away with the lead. Yeah, the West Series that we talk about has their finale here at Phoenix. It's not a national series event. Their season is already over by the time we come back here in November. But the cars and a lot of the competitors are still Rules the same. Are exactly the same. That's Rules right. Are the same. But it's interesting because it is they're set up, you know, differently for these development drivers to come up. But you'll see sometimes they'll run the East and the West. So that's exactly what William Sawalch did. He won on the East, came over here and mixed it up with the West boys and got it done. Well, and next week you'll see William in the truck series at Bristol. He's going to run there. He's got some Xfinity races towards the end of the year with Joe Gibbs Racing. So he's got a whole cluster of different kinds of vehicles he's going to be driving, trying to learn as quick as he can. But a lot of great race teams with Tricon Garage, Joe Gibbs Racing that he's going to be driving for. Look at that average finish last yeah, year, 3.6. Yeah, that's pretty good. Where do they find these kids? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the scouting Minnesota. is incredible. They, they found him <laughs> yeah, in Minnesota. Yeah, they find all the drivers That's in right. Minnesota. Well, and to be honest, a lot of the good drivers and their families find the good teams. They see that talent. They know what their their son or you know daughter has in the ability, and they say, hey, we got to go find you the best opportunity. It's like if your child plays football or baseball, you're going to find them the best coach or best travel team that you can, and that's what a lot of these families do. They know that Joe Gibbs Racing. They know that Billy Venturini and Rev Racing. They have great race cars, so they're going to try to get their son or daughter into those vehicles. See Tony Bridinger walking away there. She's had a good night. Shown ninth on the board right now. We're still waiting. Raindrops are not falling. We're hoping to wrap this thing up. Stay with us for the call after this.
Welcome back to Phoenix Raceway. Jamie Little with you, Trevor Bain, Phil Parsons. Well, the wind is picking up, and that's not a good sign as we continue awaiting final word from the ARCA officials. Looking at the forecast, seeing if we can finish this race up with 35 laps to go. But as we wait, we're going to step aside. Coming up, Best of Radioactive is coming at you.
Weather gods were not on our side. The rain came in, washed away the track. We've lost it. That means the race has officially been called. That means one thing. William Sawalich, the 17-year-old from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, picks up his fifth career Arkham Menard Series national win. Take a look at the results from tonight's race. So we shorten it a little bit, 115 laps. William Swalch in the 18, Gio Ruggiero. His National Series debut finishes second, led 49 laps tonight. Grand Enfinger, great to have him back. He says it's the only race he's going to run this year. Yeah, great run by Connor Mosek. who started in the 19th position all the way up to fourth, and who knows what might have happened had we finished this thing. Hey, the stat book doesn't care how you got it done. So William Swalich right exactly now, this right. victory lane is going to be just as sweet <laughs> as if we ran 150 laps instead of 115. Last year's winner, Tyler Reif, finished 11th. Tony Breidinger talked about her a lot. She finished 9th inside the top 10. And Isabella Robusta, we talked about her a lot as well and deserved it. She finished 6th, ran in the top 5 most of the race, lost a little bit of ground on one of those late restarts. Yeah, and on the other side, we saw Andy Jankoyak down there in 27th, had a rough start to his day early on with that tire issue. Also, Dana Kadar in 40th there with that crash on lap 1 in turns 1 and 2. So much buildup for it to all go sideways so early in the race. Well, let's hear from our race winner. He's with Josh Sims. And I'm down here with William Sawalich. And William, we talked about redemption earlier today. I know last year at this race, you were leading in overtime and got spun. And you talked about how you felt like this track might have owed you one. Well, rain shortened, but you got the win. What does it mean? Yeah, I mean, for sure, not the way I wanted to win a race, but I knew we had the best uh, car out there. I mean, our Starkey Sound Gear Toyota Camry was really good all night. We kind of fell back in that first stint, uh, but then the guys made a really good adjustment. I'm super proud of them for doing that and sticking with me. Um, yeah, I mean, we just ran a good race, and I knew we could definitely had a chance to win it, so I'm really proud of that. Well, and Sue Wallace, your winner here at Phoenix, Heather. And a very impressive run and just her first start in the ARCA series, Isabella Robusto. You started six, you ran in the top five most of the race. Just describe tonight. And I know you mentioned you wanted more time out there on track. Yeah, it's unreal. Um, I wish we had one less caution there or the race went about 15 laps longer. Cars definitely way better on the long runs and we saw that in the first half. Was able to run up to the end of third place and was running down second there for a while. So. Had a really good car. Can't thank Minarini Mobile One Toyota enough. Um, my Toyota camera was really fast. And I think that I have a lot that I need to kind of go back and watch and learn from from this. I think restarts and kind of learning how the air works is going to be the main things I need to go and research before we go back for the next race. An impressive run here for Isabella. Jamie, got to love that smile. She loved every minute of it. International Women's Day, what a performance for her first time ever being in an ARCA car. Yeah, now she has experience to go back on. When she gets in the simulator, she talked about what to look for as she studies for the next race. Now she has seen that firsthand and she knows what to look for. With Toyota, she has the tools now to learn everything she felt like she maybe didn't do a great job with tonight, and she will be better next time. And they're showing her different texts right now <laughs> coming from the boss. Such a cool feeling for her, I'm We'll sure. see her back in the Arkham and Art Series a couple of different times. A lot more action to come this weekend. You see practice and qualifying for the Xfinity Series tomorrow morning. We've got the Cup Series qualifying race day at 3.30. And we've got the Xfinity Series race at 4.30. For Trevor Bain, Phil Parsons, Heather DeBow, Josh Sims, I'm Jamie Little. Thanks so much for being here. Coming up next, it's Mountain West College Hoops, Boise State, and my alma mater, San Diego State, so long from Phoenix.